Hello students, Eric Magidson here with Central Oregon Community College. This is Lab 6, working with disks for CIS 279W7 Windows 7 configuration. So as you can see, I've got my domain controller open. I've got the client NYCCLA open that we need. And of course, there's a quick addendum to this lab. We're going to need to go into Start, right-click on Computer and Manage. We are going to go into disk management right off the bat, but as we're going to see, we don't have any unpartitioned space. So what we're going to need to do is create that unpartitioned space by going into disk management and shrinking our primary C partition. So as we'll see when the disk management comes up, here's what I was talking about. We don't have any partition space. We're going to go ahead and right click and shrink this volume. It takes a minute to query, so I'm going to go ahead and pause, and I'll be back as soon as the query finishes. Once it queries the drive, it's going to calculate how much room was on the drive, how much space is available to shrink the drive. In this case, we're just going to shrink it by 19,998. We'll say shrink, and it'll go ahead and take essentially 19.53 uh, gigabytes by typing in 19,998 meg. Uh, it'll give us that space. So I'm going to pause while it does that. And now that we have that unpartitioned space, we can go ahead and create our first volume. So we're going to go New Simple Volume, Next Past the Screen. We don't want to use all of our unallocated space. We're going to just utilize 2,000 megabytes of that space. We're going to give this volume a drive letter of X leaving everything else the same. We do want to make this FAT32 for our demonstration and we're going to label the volume ALICE1. We'll perform a quick format on the volume so we'll say next. We'll review the information making sure it's what we want it to be and hit finish. So at this point as you can see it's gone ahead and created that volume. It's now going to format the volume and once it's done with the quick format, we have the Alice 1 partition. Now at this point, what it wants us to do, the lab, is go ahead and copy some files to this partition here. So I'm going to right click on the partition and say open. And it's going to open Alice 1 in the management here. I can go to network. And this is where in the lab, remember I said we need to turn on network discovery, which we can do here and we can wait for this to authenticate back to the domain controller for it to update its network settings to show us the domain controller or of course there's a faster way we can just go in and go backslash rwdc01 backslash into downloads the file we're looking to copy onto Alice 1 is Win 7 Pro so I'm going to go ahead and right click that, drag it and let it go. I'm going to tell it to copy here. And as I do this, it's going to prepare the copy by checking is there enough available space. As you can see, there is not enough available space. I need an additional 407 megabytes on Alice in order to copy the file. There is no reason to continue, so I'm going to say cancel and we'll continue on with the lab. So now that we know we can't extend we can't copy the whole file because there's not enough room we're gonna go ahead and extend this partition we're gonna use the command prompt to do that so we're gonna go into the command prompt and we're gonna type disk part once we're in the disk part we're going to select disk 0, that's the disk we've been working with, and we're going to list the partitions. So here you can see are the partitions that were created previously, the 100 meg, the 107 gig, and our partition there. So at this point we want to go ahead and select partition 3, and we are going to try to extend it. Now in the book it says the extend size is the amount of unallocated space left on the drive in megabytes. Well, if I don't know this, 
I can actually go back to disk management. Here's the unallocated space, but I need this in megabytes. One of the easiest way I know to find this is to right click, go through the new simple volume again. We're not going to walk all the way through this, but if you notice, the maximum disk space available is 17,997. So I can just cancel this, come back here, and type extend size equals 17,997. Helps to have an equal sign there. And run it. Now if you notice, it says the volume cannot be extended because the file system does not support it. Well, in order to extend the file system, we can't be on FAT32. We have to be on, that's right, NTFS. So we're going to go ahead and convert that. So we're going to exit the disk part. And then we're going to type convert space. We want to convert the X drive. So X colon four slash to file system NTFS. And then we'll add a couple more additional variables. It says the type of file system is FAT32. Enter the current volume for the label. So we again are going to just call this Alice1 and it will go ahead and do the conversion. As it starts out the conversion it'll determine the disk space required for file system conversion so of course we can't do this on a full disk and it'll go ahead and do the conversion. Once it's done with the conversion, as you can see, conversion complete. We're going to go back into disk part. And then once we're in disk part, we need to select the disk again. We can list the partition if we don't remember it. But of course, we know the partition. So we're going to select partition 3. We're going to extend size 17,997 and it has extended it. So now let's go confirm this by coming in here and we can see Alice X is now 1953 gigabytes in size. So at this point we can go ahead and open up Alice, we can go and try to copy that file again. Under Downloads, Win 7 Pro, I again I'm going to copy that over to Alice. And this time, because our volume is large enough to copy the 2.77 gigs, it is going to copy. I'm going to go ahead and pause while it does that. So now that it's done copying the files, we're actually going to go back into our drive and we're going to shrink the Alice1 partitions so that we can create some additional partitions. So again, it's going to query the Alice1 partition to see how much disk space is left. And according to this, I have 17507. We want to shrink this but leave an additional 2000 megabytes in the file so we're going to go 15507 that'll leave this partition at 4490 megs so I can say shrink and that gives me back 15.14 gigs of unallocated space at which point we're going to create an additional 2 gig volume so let's go ahead and do that. In the unallocated space, I'm going to right click, new volume. This one is also going to be 2000 megs in size. Next, we'll leave everything else the same. I'm going to call this Y. It will be NTFS and this volume label is going to be Alice 2 form a quick format, make sure the information is correct and say finish. 
And you'll notice something very unique about when it creates this volume. Remember in our reading we could only have three par primary partitions on a disk. So we have that system partition, we've got our primary OS partition, the Alice 1 we created. So now it's going to create an extended partition, okay, with you know, with this partition here being, as you can see, a logical drive. So the next thing that it asks us to do is go ahead and try to extend the Alice 1. And as you can see, we can't extend it. Now, that's a question uh, within the lab guide, and I'm going to leave that to you to say why we can't extend that one. Now it says, though, to right click on the Alice 2 volume you created and try to extend it. Let's see if we can do that. Can we extend it? We certainly can. See how it's not grayed out? So we're going to create a new folder on the computer's X drive called Alice 3. Okay, well that's the X drive, right? So we're going to come in here. We'll open this up. We'll create a new folder. We're going to call this folder Alice 3. Now let's go create an additional volume in our empty space. So we're going to do a new simple volume. Volume size will also be 2000 in size. On the drive letter or path, we're going to select to mount this into an NTFS folder. We're going to browse to the Alice 3 that we just created under X. There's Alice 3. We're going to say OK. And next, on the format, it's going to be NTFS and this volume will be Alice 3. So what we're doing of course is mounting this volume underneath that Alice 3 folder that we created. We'll say next, we'll say finish, and we can watch that be created as well. So now it wants us to just go look at the properties of the X drive, seeing if it's going to include the space of Alice 3. Remember that we mounted to the volume, so we're going to come take a quick look at that. And if you remember, as we shrunk this, we kept it to just over 4 gigs. So clearly, it's not going to show the capacity um, of that mounted uh, folder. So we'll say OK. Now let's go actually go into Alice X, the Alice 1 or the X drive there. There's that. Let's look at the properties of the Alice 3. So here's the properties of that. We see it is a mounted volume and we see it does constitute the two gigs that we associated with it. So just sort of some confirmation that what we did is what got done. So the last thing we're going to want to do is look at converting this basic disk into a dynamic disk. So let's go ahead and do that. Basically what we do is we right click over here it says convert to dynamic disk. Now remember once we convert it we can't go back. We are going to convert disk 0. We'll say OK. Gives us the information on the convert and we choose convert. Notice it says after you convert these disks to dynamic you will not be able to start installed operating systems from any volume on these disks except the current boot volume. So we're good with that and we can go ahead and say yes and it will do the conversion. We get that quick error which we can just go ahead and say OK to it basically because it's not updated view here so we can uh, just refresh the view and we can see that it is now a dynamic disk. So finally we're going to do a little cleanup. It wants us to go ahead and delete the Alice 3 volume which we'll do. We're going to delete the Alice 2 volume, which we'll do. And if you notice as I do that, the unallocated space grows. Finally, it does want us to keep Alice 1 extending it using all of the remaining space. So remember, if I didn't know how much space was available, 15507. So I've got to right click here. And then at that point, I can extend the volume. It should calculate what I want to do. Notice 
selected disks, this is going to look different because we're in a dynamic. And remember, we can span a dynamic volume over multiple physical drives. Here's the space on the disk, 15507. I'll say next and finish, and it will expand that. So that's pretty much it for Lab 6. We'll see you again next time for an exciting Lab 7. Take care.